There was a time when there were just a few major drum companies that built drums. All the drummers knew their names and the drummers they built and that was pretty much it. Now of course there are some smaller companies out there that are building custom drum sets. But when it comes to companies that deliver a full line of drums, snares, and hardware, those are limited to a few select. Which brings me to Dixon Drums, a company that a handful of drummers know about, but is quickly bringing their name to the forefront of the drumming world, with their aggressive campaigning and marketing to let the world know they make superior drums. This is the Dixon Artisan Limited Kit, what Dixon calls their flagship series and delivers the very best they have to offer for drummers looking for creative control and something that captures their unique look and sound. Hello everybody, I'm Brian Christopher Mendes and welcome to Mendiesel 101, my new web series that deals with gear, lessons, humor, and tips and advice on anything that I've learned in the past 22 years as a professional drummer. Today I'm reviewing the Dixon Artisan Limited Kit that was custom built for me in mahogany shells with a one of a kind white sparkle lacquer. Now there are a lot of people that aren't familiar with Dixon. Oh, I should clarify, there are a lot of people that aren't familiar with Dixon's upper line or flagship series of drums. Because most here in America were exposed to the beginner line series of drums. I too was one of those people until I subbed for a Texas country artist where the drummer was a Dixon artist. They had an artisan kit that they had left for me on the tour bus. I was naive and actually hesitant to take the guy's offer when he offered me to use his drum set because they were already on the tour bus. He said, you can bring your drums if you like and I seriously was contemplating it and I'm glad I did because it was at this very moment when I pulled them out of the case, felt the build and then actually got to play with them during sound check that I realized, ho. Oh, Dixon ain't playing. I realized my preconceived ideas of what I expected were completely thrown out the window. I was actually blown away and knew I had to get me a set. Fast forward a few years, and now I'm a Dixon artist. Now this is when I learned Dixon has actually been around since 1979. Say what? 79? 79? Did he just say 79? I said 79. Why am I asking if I just said 79? You have to forgive me, it's been two and a half weeks of quarantine and I'm starting to go a little bit crazy. So yes, 1979 is when they started building. And they've been building drums and hardware for many major brand companies. It has only been in the past years that they have started pushing the upper line of drums, the Artisan series. And I can say without a doubt that these drums are on par with any major brand out there right now. Dixon offers three different artisan lines, so to speak, with a choice of the North American Maple line that comes in seven ply, the Ultra Maple line that comes in a six ply, and then the Artisan Limited kit, which offers both the North American Maple, the Ultra Maple, but also oak, birch, and mahogany, with pretty much an unlimited choice of lacquered finishes. This particular cat, this cat, this particular, <laughs> Ah, you know, I'm gonna leave that in there, folks. You don't know how much I gotta do when it comes to editing. So let's start that over. This particular kit was built from scratch. I'm Vanna Whiting it right now. Maybe I'll zoom in on the hands. <sighs> I've been cooped up in the house for two and a half weeks, folks. <laughs> so yes, this particular kit was made from scratch for me. Now when I mean scratch, they literally made the shells. Because when I was talking to my rep, I found out that they just didn't have shells laying around. Now they got, you know, a stock of maple and birch, but they had to actually build these for me with the molds that they own. So Dixon makes their own shells. They're not outsourcing them and getting them from somewhere else. They actually have the hardware to do so. These shells are African mahogany. Mahogany? Yeah. Mahogany. 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 The shells are African mahogany six ply, both of them being the kick and toms, but the kick comes in at 7.2 millimeters and the toms come in at 5.6 millimeter. Both kick and toms have a countercut 45 degree bearing edge. I requested it in a white sparkle. Little did I know, I didn't realize that I just thought they were going to build me a kit and then wrap it. All artisan kits come with a lacquered finish. 
Then I found out it was gonna be the first one they've ever done in White Sparkle. So that actually really touched me. These guys are committed to their customers and their artists. I requested the hoops and lugs to be in a satin chrome. The end result is truly a visually stunning kit. Now I went with the shallow or fast tom configuration for three reasons. One, I like the sound of the style of this tom. They have plenty of tone, body, attack, and projection, but with a quicker decay than that of a standard tom, but not that much when done right. Two, I find these toms to be a bit easier to tune. I used to tech for Ronald Bruno Jr. when I lived out in LA. He's the one who introduced me to these style of toms. And I was always amazed when we slapped new heads on there, how easy they were to tune up. Three, I play a 24 inch kick drum. These size toms are easier to set up on top of the kick than if they were standard sizes. Now on a side note, I knew the combination of a shallower tom and the mahogany shell would give me more of what I was looking for when it came to what might be lost with the shallower tom meaning the mahogany has a deep, robust tone to it already, uh, and the maple has a, comparatively speaking, is higher end on the spectrum, right? So I've noticed that maple shells with these size toms, they do have a bit more attack, and the decay really is lost sometimes um, if you step back and you, all you hear is just attack in certain situations. I noticed with these, because of the shells, because of the wood, that I don't lose a lot of that sound that a traditional tom would give you, so to speak. These aren't quick with decay. Because of the mahogany shells, they're nice and warm and fat, and they still have like that sound, so to speak. I went with a 14 by 24 inch kick. Now, I choose this because I've noticed there's been a huge trend for the last decade and a half of 18 inch long kick drums. For you guys out there that are young, all us older cats know that before the standard size was 14 in depth and then it became 16 and then the 18 came along and it looks really cool and it serves its purposes for a certain sound but I found that I started going back to a traditional size depth because it just sounds better to me. The music that I'm playing, the way it feels, the way it records, it's just mm. And there is a reason why I'm noticing a lot of companies are starting to go back to 16 and 14 inch depths. Also, it's easier to set up on a smaller stage. Let's be real guys, a lot of you guys are playing club dates. Ain't nothing wrong with it, I do it myself. But when you're playing a club date and you got a small stage, that 18 inch kick can get in the way. This right here, or a 16 inch depth, does it. And you're like, it's just a two inch difference with 16 or a four inch difference, it really makes a big difference. That's what she said. <laughs> Alrighty. Now I also went with the mount on top of the kick drum. There was a trend for a while where the kicks were virgin, so to speak, which means no hole on the kick and the toms had to be mounted off of either a stand that was meant for the tom itself or a cymbal stand. And now again, this comes back to club dates. Guys, we're all being rushed. There's three bands in one night. Depends on what style of music. For metal, man, those guys will have like eight bands in one night. But let's just say you're on any other style of music and you're playing three different acts and you're rushed up on stage. What I noticed is I could never exactly get the tom right. It never felt right when I was playing it. Now you guys come out there, let's mark the rug. It's not that simple. There's a rug usually there at the club and it's not always the perfect scenario. What you want is what you get. Remember that. So when you're being rushed up on stage, I noticed that I could never get the tom right. But whenever I did play on a house kit that had this style scenario always felt really good. And then I noticed that I could move the cymbal stand wherever I wanted it, which could be just like a, just a half an inch over or a full inch. I play large cymbals. So with 24, 22, it's real hard to have those mounted off and then get everything positioned right. It's just a hassle. With this, boom, 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 in and out, feels great. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey, yo, forget about it, huh? Now with the floor toms, I went with the more traditional size, 14 and 14, 14 and 14, 14 by 14 and 16 by 16. Now one of the most important aspects of gear is the build quality. Most if not all can immediately tell when you grab something and pull it right out of the box, right? You grab it and it's just like, yes. Or you grab it and you go, man, this thing feels cheap. 
We've all done it. It can be electronic. It can be anything. But once you grab it, you can feel it. You're like, hmm, this has got a nice build to it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So when I pulled these out of the box, I immediately felt the supreme build quality that the Artisan kit has to offer. Dixon does not skimp on the materials when it comes to this kit. Now, one of the things I want to point out, guys, is the floor tom legs on this kit. Sounds kind of weird, right? Now, I've had kits that had skinnier legs that were really light. If I'm playing a very hard-hitting style of music, I would notice that the floor toms would move on me. Now, if I'm playing, you know, singer-songwriter or, or, or something quieter, that was never really an issue. But when it came to other things, especially if I got into a bigger situation, 15,000, 5,000 people, 1,500 people, you want to hit harder, stuff starts to move. Not with these. These floor tom legs are tremendous, man. I mean, it's like beef. With the combination of both die cast hoops and these legs, the floor tom is not going anywhere. And they're not gonna bend on you either. I've had floor tom legs bend. You put everything in a trap case, you're shuffling it all around, you're putting it in the back of a van or into the back of a bus or into the back of a trailer. They're getting mushed all around. Depends on what kind of case you're in, but those floor tom legs can bend. With these, no, nine, nada. Nada? Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, no, no, yeah. So after all of this, your question is, hey, Rubberhead, what do the drums sound like? And that's a valid question. And what I'm gonna say to you is, who you calling Rubberhead, sucker? <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks in quarantine, folks. You gotta forgive me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. So these drums sound exactly how they look. Phenomenal. I feel this kit is very versatile. They can cover the spread of whatever I need. Tune it up, tune it down, whatever it needs, it sounds great. And it doesn't either bottom out on me in certain situations. I can take certain kits to a gig. Living here in Texas, I play a lot of blues, singer-songwriter, country, pop, R&B, metal. So I do run the spectrum of styles and sounds. This kit covers it. Sounds fantastic. I go 10, 12, 14, 16, 24. I like a big girthy kick. Obviously there's no hole. I got an internal mic inside, but I do like the spectrum of sound from going from high to low. They're very versatile. I can break it down to a four piece kit, tom, floor tom, kick, snare, and go play any pretty much universal gig with that. Growing up listening to Slayer, Depeche Mode, Madonna, Prince, Missing Person, Police, ZZ Top, Cameo, Deftone, Duran Duran, Public Enemy, NWA, Rage Against the Machine, Billy Cobb, Early John Schofield, John McLaughlin, Alan Holdsworth, Devo, Led Zeppelin. My taste is wide, and I need my drums to cover that palette, if that makes any sense. I think it's important that drummers have equipment for specific things and also equipment that can cover a lot of ground, which means that it needs to have a lot of headroom. What I mean by that is, I've said this before in another video, if you have a drum that goes from here to here, you can make it sound like this. But if you have a drum that sounds like this, you can't make it sound like this. These drums sound like this. And then if I wanna make them sound like this, do something different, I can't. It's very important that your drums be able to cover a lot of ground. Unless you've got a lot of money and you got a kit for every specific thing, um, most working musicians don't. Now, I do have a lot of snare drums. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but for drums, I'm trying to cut back. I don't need to take all that space up.
review, I'd like to conclude with this. I don't think there is a best. I think there is a best for you. Beautiful thing about all this gear is we have choices. We have great, and then we have not so great sometimes. I know, me personally, there are so many snare drums I would like to buy out there. I could fill this entire room up with snare drums. You are not buying any more snare drums. I know, dear. I know. You want to tell me to buy another snare drum? I'll do what the hell I want to do. What did he tell you? Nothing. Nothing. I didn't say nothing. Anyone looking to buy a flagship series kit should seriously consider Dixon's Artisan line. They compete or surpass with any company out there with their flagship series. Their drums are absolutely stunning to look at, sonically satisfying, and an inspiration to play, which is what any of us want out of our instrument. So if you like what you're hearing, please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And leave in the comments below what you would like to see me review in the future. I'm Brian Mendes. This is Mendes Diesel 101. Peace and chicken grease.